I know some people are going to ask about it. I don't know why. I don't know what the fascination is. But I also saw the Andrew Tabiti James Wilson fight. Now, I did at least one video, possibly two videos, about James Wilson a couple years ago because there were people in the comment section of some of my videos saying, Have you seen this James the Beast Wilson guy? What do you think about James Wilson? You need to do a prospect video about James Wilson. And so I did the video. And I'd spoken briefly about Wilson in previous videos. And I'd said then that James Wilson is very poor. <laughs> I'm not talking about financially. I mean, in terms of his boxing ability. The only people that were really hyped about Wilson, I would imagine, were casuals on Instagram. Because James Wilson had these clips on Instagram where he was hitting the pads like Mike Tyson and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, there's a million guys on Instagram doing Mike Tyson pad routines. Some of these guys are muscular and, you know, they're throwing, uh, throwing everything into the punches. But then you see them in the ring and they're absolutely useless. <laughs> and that's how James Wilson, no disrespect to James Wilson. Again, maybe he's a really nice guy. But as a boxer, just speaking objectively, I knew that James Wilson wasn't going anywhere because I had actually watched his fights. A lot of the people who were caught up in a James Wilson hype, they'd never seen him fight. They just watched some Instagram video with dramatic music. And in the title of the Instagram video, it says the new Mike Tyson. And they think, wow, he's the, he's the guy. No, watch him fight. And if you'd watched him fight as I had, you'd realize that this guy's useless. He's struggling with journeyman since the start of his career. And in his last fight prior to facing Tabiti, which was in 2019, he fought this guy called Miguel Kubos, and it was a majority draw. And if you look at Kubos's record, folks, it's not good. Kubos lost 23 times, 12 times by knockout. And look at some of the people that beat him. Lenroy Thomas beat him. All right? Let's have a look here now. Uh, Ryan Ford beat him. <laughs> Anthony Sims Jr. knocked him out in one round. That's at 175. And various other losses here, some by decision, some by knockout. Yeah, all the way down at 150, 135. Come on, people. A guy who's fought as low as 135 is having a majority draw with James Wilson. And so this is what I was saying in the video. <laughs> James Wilson is no good. So going into the Tabiti fight, there was a shout out to, to Clint, by the way. Uh, he asked about the James Wilson fight and whatever on uh, the AJ card. And I said to him in the element group, I was like, that's a one-sided fight. I mean, that's not, Wilson can't fight at all. Uh, the, the Tabiti fight, uh, Tabiti's going to have no problems whatsoever. That's very straightforward for him. Wilson can't fight on top of not being able to fight. He's taking it on short notice, so this is just going to be a walk in the park for Andrew Tabiti. And that's exactly how it played out. It was a complete walk in the park. Tabiti had no issues at all, and James Wilson ended up retiring after, what was it, five rounds. So that was that. And, you know, with regards to the Mike Tyson wannabes, and I'm, I say that not meaning to be disrespectful, I'm just describing what they are. The Mike Tyson wannabes out there. The Costamato style is extremely difficult to master. It's really something that you have to have been training with or training under, using from when you first start boxing at the age of 12 or 13. If you are hoping to master that style, you need to be doing it from when you're a kid. And you need to be taught that style by Kevin Rooney. Get yourself up to the Catskill Mountains. <laughs> and go see Kevin Rooney up there. Because a lot of these other guys who are trying to emulate the custom model style, they don't know what they're doing. And they don't understand what Mike Tyson, because ultimately that's who they're trying to emulate. They don't really understand what Mike Tyson was all about. Mike Tyson wasn't on the pads, putting everything into every punch and whipping himself up into this frenzy of rage before he hit the pads or the bag. People have been watching too many highlight videos with the dramatic music, because that's what they think Mike Tyson was doing. No, if you watch Mike Tyson on the pads or on the bag, it's very technical. 
He's not ah winging away and ah screaming, <laughs> you know, <laughs> foaming at the mouth like a rabid dog. That's not what Mike Tyson's like on the pads. It's very, very technical. It's about precision. He's mastering and working on certain drills where he's going to move in a particular way after he punches and then he's going to move his head afterwards. That's what he's doing on the pads with Rooney. That's what he's doing on the bag. It's all about precision, technique, getting it right, perfecting the angle of the punches, landing clean, and all that kind of thing. Very rarely will you see a Mike Tyson heavy bag or pad routine, you know, by Mike Tyson himself, where he's going for endurance, where he's just throwing loads and loads of punches. I'm not talking about now that he's an old man and he's working with that uh, Latino guy. Never mind that. I'm talking about a prime Mike Tyson. It was all very technical. Yeah, on the back, he would throw a few shots, then he would move around and he would do some head movement and stuff like that. Then he'd throw a few shots. It wasn't constant work because he's thinking about his technique all the time. And that was one of the secrets to why Mike Tyson became so successful. The technique is very technical. It's not about screaming and ah, coming in with uppercuts and hooks. That's what happens when you watch too many Mike Tyson highlight reels. You think that that's what Tyson was. He was actually a technical pressure fighter. You watch the Trevor Burbick fight. That's very technical. <laughs> okay. Tyson's looking at what he's doing. He's looking for jabs. He's picking his punches. He's not just coming in, throwing shots with rec reckless abandon. He's picking his shots. Yeah. And so that's the mentality that you have to have <laughs> if you're hoping to emulate a Mike Tyson type style. Yeah, all the screaming on the bag and foaming at the mouth, that, that's not, that's not going to help you because you're throwing punches without thinking about what you're doing. Now, if you're having an endurance session, then okay. But if most of your bag sessions are like that, you're going to have problems. If most of your pad sessions are like that, you're going to have problems. You need to slow it all down, think about what you're doing. But yeah, with uh, James Wilson, it didn't work out. It was never going to work out. He's from an MMA background, and my advice to him, again, no disrespect, is that he goes back to MMA, uh, because clearly that's where most of his ability is. And MMA, from what I've seen, tends to be a bit better for older athletes. Um, or sh let me rephrase that. Older athletes tend to have more success in MMA, particularly if they're good wrestlers. Because wrestling doesn't require the kind of reflexes that striking does. In boxing, it's stand up, you're throwing punches, your reflexes need to be really on point. Whereas with wrestling, I'm not saying you don't need any reflexes at all. Don't misquote, don't mishear what I'm telling you. I'm not saying that wrestling doesn't require reflexes. Obviously, people are shooting in for takedowns and all this kind of stuff. But it doesn't require as much reflexes as boxing does. Wrestling I'm talking about here. Therefore, you can get guys in MMA who are in their late 30s, 40s, and they're still successful. So for me, I don't know what maybe injuries James Wilson's been dealing with and why he made the transition to boxing. If he can overcome the injuries, if there is any way, then I think MMA is the place for him. A guy as short as he is, as heavy as he is, that's one of the things I talked about in the video about James Wilson is that he's too heavy for his frame. He can't be a, a 238 pound heavyweight. You're only six feet tall. It's not going to work out for you, especially in this day and age when the guys are like six, five plus, yeah, or they're unbelievably fast like you sick and skillful. No, that's not going to work out. If you're six foot, you're going to need to be no more than 225. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't be coming in 238. You need to get so much of that muscle off to give yourself any chance at all. And I don't think that James Wilson has any chance, regardless of if he takes the weight off. I'm talking in general terms about any shorter heavyweight. Yeah, to take heed of that advice and don't try and bulk yourself up like an Oscar Rivas or a James Wilson. Come in light. Alexander Usyk, 221 pounds. The same weight as Mike Tyson when he beat Trevor Burbick back in, what was it, 86, 85, 86? And he beat AJ, who's what, 244? A modern, supersized heavyweight. You don't need to be massive. 
Deontay Wilder. He's had a lot of success in his career. And he was at his best, for my money, when he was 220 or less. You don't need to be massive. People get far too caught up in this idea that the bigger the better when it comes to heavyweight boxing. No, not necessarily. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Until next time. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, it's decentralized, and it's 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract, there's no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.